Welcome back to Lawn Speed. I'm your host, Marty McFly, also known as Brendan, joined by my co-host, Doc Brown, also known as Zach, on this epic journey to go 1.2 miles per hour and create 88 gigawatts worth of inaccuracies. <laughs> Let's roll the tape. This is going to be a good one. There's multiple shapes and sh- sizes. Just decide that a real fat guy is just a bear and it's and hitting an animal. Well, it's not going to hit a bear. <laughs> well, yeah, I know <laughs> that. But it will determine the, the... Launch speed? Launch speed? Launch speed? <laughs> Stop, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to put my words together. You're rushing me. Am I helping? No, not at all. No one else can see my hands. Welcome to Launch Speed. Did you do anything exciting this week? Anything at all? So last weekend we played uh, VR. Oh, did we? We did. I hate you. <laughs> that was my excitement. No, let's talk about VR for a bit. That Tell me that wasn't the coolest setup we've seen for VR. So, so uh, I mean, I have the HTC Vive. I've played on the HTC Vive before, obviously. Uh, it's really good. And it set itself apart from other VR sets because it had the room scale. So you could walk around and you didn't basically just have to sit in a chair, which is what the original Oculus Rift did. Right. So right. the vibe was really good. Its its downsides were that you had to be hooked up to a computer. You had to have the uh, the base stations, the little camera things, and you had to have a cord attached to you. So you were tripping over the cord. Oh, that's right. I remember the. I forgot about the cable. Yeah, they did. They did make an accessory that that had you put it in a backpack, and I had a battery in there, and then it sent it to the uh, to the computer. But even that was likely to lag. And the lag in VR is what creates motion sickness for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not fun when something suddenly accelerates or slows down out of real time. My so I've never actually experienced the motion sickness in VR. The thing that gets me is when you think you're falling. It like. It's so crazy realistic because just your entire vision in your peripherals, which is really what immerses you, and you, you think you're falling off a cliff, it, it, re- it makes yeah. my knees buckle. So what was the system? I don't, I don't remember the name exactly. This was the Oculus Quest. A friend brought it over, and we played on the Oculus Quest for a bit. And uh, I like there's, there's a lot of things that I like about it. The, the best thing is that it's self-contained. It's yes. fully self-contained. You don't need any of the setup. You don't even need a computer. It's just a standalone thing. It's also very cheap. He says that, that Facebook is losing money on every unit they sell. But I think it's it, it, he's absolutely right that it's like a very good step into getting VR into the mass market. Yeah. I mean, they needed someone needed to take a hit to break it open. Right. And so, I mean, there, it's it doesn't have the best selection of games right now, and there are a couple issues with it. But another thing that's really good about it, the, besides the fact that it's totally self-contained, is you can actually stream it to a Chromecast. So and other people can enjoy watching you F suck. Up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that game we were playing, Super Hot, is a lot tougher than it looks. See, it, you guys played Super Hot like the the little bitch way, the right way to no, do it. No, the bitch way. The you guys right, were like doing everything slow. Well, because time stops. So this game, you got to be so good. You got to be able to just run through it muscle memory wise. That's what I was trying to do was just do it at full speed and not die. It's, so the game, the, everybody else stops unless you're moving. And when you move, the faster you move, the faster things go. So obviously, the right way to do it, the way they intended it to do it is to take your time and like stop, pick up a gun, point it at the guy, shoot and then dodge. So that's obviously how they intended it. Yeah. I under, I understand your point. <laughs> I and if you get to that level, that would be really cool, but it, it, you're just <laughs> yeah. watching you die over and over again is not that fun. Hey, I got more levels beaten than you did, and that's what matters. You sure did. You also played it for longer. I did. <laughs> that's what matters. So also I want to talk about the game Beat Saber, I feel like that's mostly what a lot of people know of VR. Yeah, it's like DDR, except for you have lightsabers. And, and you, you have to hit the blocks coming at you from a certain direction. And the more accurate you hit them, the more points you get. And then you, there's other things you have to dodge. I So I didn't experience motion sickness, but I almost vomited from pure... Joy? No, uh, <laughs> fear. Really? So you know how you stand... Like, if you are in the playing beat saber you're standing on a platform that's just space beneath and it the screen does have lines running downwards so it gives you a perspective of depth i honestly didn't even look down so i thought that someone was near me so i took a step to my left yeah i took a step to my left to so i wouldn't hit him if i was like swinging an arm 
and I re- and then I realized that I'm standing on a platform. My brain was like, "You're standing on a platform." I looked down, and one of my feet was coming off the edge, and I was Ow! I was just vomited right there because just like the sense, like I my body started to accelerate for the fall, and I was like, "I'm gonna be sick." I'll yeah, be sick in this headset. <laughs> it it's so crazy, and there's something that you can't really get until you experience it. Yeah, uh, and my excitement for this week is one is arriving here on Monday. Oh, you got it? I got it. Oh, dude, I'm so <laughs> excited. This is going to be so great. So I what the only th- I wanted to add two things. Yep. I wanted to add you know, better support for their games. So there were some games that you couldn't cast. Yeah. Like the Super Hot. Be- Sa- oh. Super Hot, you could cast Beat Saber. Right now, there's a glitch where you can't. Right. So and they're then trying to fix that. Also, since they're freestanding and you can do your own room map, if you could have someone else with a headset, you can also map them into it, and you can do co-op games VR. That'd be cool. Like, That'd be nifty. Like Minecraft together. I, obviously, that would be boring. But <laughs> it would still be pretty cool. Yeah, it would be. I haven't. I didn't try the like watching Netflix in it and stuff like that. This seems I, interesting. I don't think I I could do it. Not for the fact that it doesn't appeal to me, but I don't think I'd ever do anything because you the the thing about watching Netflix for me is. Your your you know your conscience of you know what's going on around you, and it kind of gives you a sense of time. But if you're just locked into just the TV, and the only thing you can hear is the sound from the whatever show you're watching, and you can watch it in whatever position you want, you can be laying flat on your back and still have the screen right in front of your face. The only way you can do that in real life is if you put a TV on the ceiling, which some people do. Some people do that. That seems so ballsy. So with the vibe, you can actually also get phone notifications sent to it so you could also potentially watch netflix and still text with this thing all right well never mind i'm gonna get it (laughs) i'll probably get one uh two weeks from now i have to purchase a laser later this next week laser level laser level not just a laser but it's a laser yeah (laughs) seven hundred dollars that's so much for a little level yep but i need it gotta get it yeah it's what we do yep did anything this week that irritated you slightly made you upset? So I finished Westworld season one, which is a show on HBO, and I yep. thought it was very well written. There were some there were some things I didn't quite get. They could have explained a little better, but I didn't see any major plot holes. And it was it was interesting. And I like when I watch something, I like being surprised. That's why I kind of dislike rewatching things, with the exception of Red vs. Blue. Yeah. And sometimes The Office. I like being surprised. I like not knowing what's going to happen next which is one of the reasons game of thrones appeals to me so westworld i didn't know what was going on until like the very last episode (laughs) they really threw me for a loop there and i don't know if it's just because i wasn't paying good enough attention or the story was written so well that i didn't quite get it but there's like a couple twists in there that that were just awesome yeah yeah season one ended in a very cool way season two so far has sucked i will tell you this season two gets no better. And I, I, if anything, it gets worse. Is there a season three out? Not yet. Okay. They're, they're so, scheduled to do a season. So three. it is season two then that I, it's the reason why I will not be watching Westworld ever again. So I, I, I read it cause I was reading articles and a lot of them talked about Westworld and the general consensus was that season two is not very good. It, it really wasn't because the thing was they, it's like the, the writers in the first season had all these great, you know tricks up their sleeve like they they had a stack deck and then they played all their fucking cards and now they're like <laughs> we don't have anything because we've played out every like every storyline is nothing now right and uh, I, at the same time i feel like there's not a whole lot of ways they could have gone in season two with how they ended season one yeah season two will disappoint you in a manner that you can't expect so it will still disappoint you okay so that it was it was disappointing. That was that was pretty much the only disappointing thing for me this week. It was a pretty relaxed week. So, I had a miserable Thursday. Both of the things I have to talk about happened on Thursday. Wow, okay. So, you know, at work, I'm a carpenter. We need we have power tools that require extension cables, right? Sure. And now you know. You know what you don't want to do? Light it on fire? You don't want to cut it in half. Oh, also that So my partner, uh, the extension cords, we have to run them off the ground because since we have lifts driving around, they will not only cut the cable, but 
Yeah, because if it's against anything and a lift runs over, it'll cut it against whatever material it is. How do you get it off the ground then? So we have to run everything over the ducts and with pipes. Oh, God, that's annoying. So it That's is, so obnoxious. So it is painful, but the thing is, usually when you get to your workstation, it has to come down. And then since you don't want it just hanging for someone to like snatch it and have no slack, you have to you know run it across your table. And it's never been a problem until Thursday. All of a sudden, my partner's like, you know what? I need to use this angle grinder and I need to do it right here on the edge of this table. And all of a sudden it's just, I hear sparks fly and he's screaming cause he shocked the hell out of himself. Nice. Cut right in the extension cord. And then he's like, do you have one in your car? Right. And I was like, I do, but I'm not bringing it now. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not getting it for us. I'm not trusting you with this. I was like, cause this thing, you know, they're not cheap. No. And he cut his own. So I was like, you can go find one, like go downstairs and get one from our, you know, uh, Cleveland, our, our company, they'll give us an extension cable. Just go down and ask. He's like, no, no, I don't want to tell him that I cut it. Why? Why do you not want to tell him you cut it? Because what he, so what he ended up doing was he ended up patching himself and we can't, we're not allowed to do that. A, a licensed electrician has to patch all extension cords that have been cut if you want to use them again. Oh, good. So he just did it himself and then he's, you know, I don't know how he's going to explain it because it looks like it's been repaired and when you know, a safety inspector finally comes around and inspects it. I'm going to be like, I don't know about anything about this. <laughs> <laughs> Not my cable. It ain't mine. Wow. What an idiot. Also, he doesn't know how to count. I know most of us learned how to count, you know, somewhere between kindergarten, maybe pre-K, hopefully before that, you know, if your parents loved you. <laughs> <laughs> All we have to do is count to 16. That's the only thing that matters is studs have to be 16 inches apart. My man here thinks that 14 is acceptable for 16. Wow. Which it, it is in the fact that it passes inspection. But what's not okay is anything over 16. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's over. It's like 16 and a half. That will fail inspection. And we'll have to redo the entire wall if one stud's wrong. Wow. Because you can't move it in either direction or it'll be long on one side or then the other. Unless one of them is 14 and the following one is 16 and that's, a half. That's true. If you, if you had given yourself some leeway, but we do everything 16 perfectly. So. Except for that one. Except for that one, and that ruins everything. And sometimes 14. And sometimes. <laughs> it does irritate me that our studs are occasionally fucked up like that. Yeah, that's obnoxious. But, you know, that's, that was that. That was the only small irritation. And then I get off work, you know, 2.30... For those who don't know this area, 2.30 and till 7 is the worst traffic possible in the D.C. area. 2.30 could be worse. It really starts at 3, at 3.30. Yeah, see, the thing is, at 3, you have the stop-and-go traffic, but at 2.30, you have people driving very aggressively trying to beat it. <laughs> so it's, I think it's worse to drive in that when people are going, you know, are willing to drive 70 with packed cars and everywhere. Yeah. So I'm in the far right lane. And I don't get out of the far right lane until I get way past the first couple exits I get by because there's it's six lanes of traffic and there's absolutely no reason for me to try to fight my way over all the way to the left-hand side. Just to get back in the right-hand side and exit. Yeah, pretty much. So I just I just hang out in the right-hand you know, lane because it goes slow and I don't mind that because that means I can just stay in second gear and I don't have to brake or accelerate. But to this day, this particular day, everyone decided that, man, that white Corolla has just a little bit more gap in front of it than every other car, I can fit there. <laughs> and then they just caused me to have to break. I I mean, it was it was a line of cars. Each one got in behind themselves, and then they basically brought me to a complete stop. And then I started going again, and then another car would cut me off. And so I just sat there and left this massive gap open up because, like, fine, you all can get in, and I'm just going to wait for, you know, whatever this for this to stop. And it's there's a gap. And I start to go, and the car behind me races up, cuts me off. Dude, that's so much fun. I was I, this. This was pretty irritating at this point. I'm I'm getting really really mad. And then that car who had who had just cut me off, that he, he's the one that brake checked me to, to stopping. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why because we weren't going anywhere. He's just like, I need to be in front of you, and I need to slow you down to zero. Because getting in front of that one car is going to make your commute that much shorter. So I get I get out of. The, that lane i'm like i'm done with this lane this lane's not working today i get, yeah. get over to the next lane and he comes over and i'm right next to him and he just starts coming into my lane i was like he's got he's got it he's gotta see me he's not even looking he's he's just getting over so ballsy I, move there so i get i get over to the next lane like 
trying to like barely fit between a semi and like a just regular pickup truck and he comes over again and he pushes me out of that lane and i was like this is nuts so now i'm in the middle of all of this traffic and i'm like i need to you know get the hell out of here i need i need to just get off this road but i can't because it's the interstate so i get over to the far left lane i'm like fine we're cool here there shouldn't i shouldn't have any problems I get cut off again to the point where I have to get over to the right-hand lane, and then that car that had just cut me off again pushes me out of that lane into the next one. I was just getting chased the whole freaking time. I don't, I don't know whether my car is just invisible to people. It has now. a target on it. It really. Someone does. slapped a bumper sticker on the back. Hey, be an ass to me. So, I, I'm at this point. I'm just raging, raging inside and outside. I'm like screaming and yelling and giving everyone the middle fingers, even if they haven't done anything to me. They're getting the middle fingers. My windows are down. I'm just scream- you get one and you get I'm one just, and everybody gets one. I'm just screaming at the top of my lungs now. I'm just so freaking mad. And I was like, this has to be the end of this, right? Wrong. One more incident. I get. I'm trying to exit. So I'm there's like I have two exits to go. So I get over back over in the far right lane. A car is coming onto the interstate, and there's a gap behind me. There's no gap in front of me. So I do what everyone else does, and I keep I maintain my speed and don't let that gap open up between me and the car in front of me. And this car is like, I can make that two-inch gap between you guys. <laughs> so he's just racing up. And I'm like, where's this guy going to go? This That lane ends into a bridge. Like, there's no, sh- no shoulder. There's no shoulder either. And I was like, he's, he's got to get in that gap behind me. He's got to, he's got to, he's got to. And the last thing I was like, he's going to kill us. And he just comes careening over. Cause I don't even think he knew that the lane ended like that. Just absolutely came careening into the lane. And if I hadn't braked the second I did, he would have hit me and I would have hit the car beside me and we all would have died. Cause he would have hit us at like 65, 70. I think that was going, I think I was going 70 at that point. I was like, there's, this is just fucking nuts, man. People suck. So I did what everyone would do, and I got over in the shoulder for the last exit and just drove at five miles an hour along the shoulder. I'm done with this. <laughs> I, I just, quit. <laughs> I couldn't do anything. I just drove five miles an hour for a quarter mile in the shoulder because I was like, no maybe. one's going to cut me off over here. <laughs> I just got to get out of this. <laughs> so that was my Thursday. That sounds like a lot of fun, man. It was the worst driving experience I have ever had and I hope to ever have ever again yeah it, it, it could be worse i'm glad i am not allowed to carry in maryland because if i was i would have broken it out and shot everybody on the road <laughs> i was just so mad afbi this guy right here I, <laughs> nay hey hey i would never do it <laughs> would want to sometimes <laughs> ah! <laughs> well let's let's keep it going let's keep it going okay okay is there anything you're looking forward to i'm looking forward to getting that vr headset I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, good. I'm glad you brought that up again. I know. Oh, I'm so excited. We're not talking about I just, it I just wanted to spring it on you. <laughs> well, is, is that why you didn't write anything in there? Yeah. Oh, see, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate these little surprises you do for me. You're a great boyfriend. <laughs> I like to keep things fresh and romantic. <laughs> I expect roses. <laughs> No. So are we? So we're talking about changing our schedule, correct? We are. We're considering it. We haven't come to a firm decision, have we? I mean, you're the editor, so it's really up to you what you want to do. So what we're considering doing is recording on Sunday and releasing on Tuesday every week. I think that'd be fine. Yeah. I mean, there's probably everyone probably has a podcast they'd rather listen to on Monday, and then when that one's over, they're like, <laughs> I need something to listen to. They maybe pick up. It's my backup one. <laughs> Um, and then next week, our podcast is most likely going to be delayed. We are. So will it be released later in the week? I'm not sure yet. I, cause I won't have access to my computer. So I, why I might. Why don't we just take a break next week? Let's, we could, let's do a break. Okay. We'll take a break next we'll, week. You know, coming to you live podcast will not be coming out, uh, the following weekend. All right. Good. Good plan. Cause you're going to be in Georgia. Illinois? i'll be on a work trip illinois where are you going alaska california california oh right yeah the part that no one wants to be part of the united states <laughs> <laughs> mike we are sorry we forgot to mention you last week <sighs> we, we still appreciated your email also shout out to your son mike please tell him that please tell him that the fuck word is a bad word to say <laughs> 
Uh, also, Mike, thank you for your email this week. As glorious as ever. Yes. We are we are very happy to have you as a listener. And hopefully as a patron soon. Hopefully as a patron soon, yes. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, for everybody who's a patron by June 14th, we are going to eat our money and give each of you guys a free t-shirt of a new design that Zach is coming out with. So if you want a free t-shirt, free-ish, free-ish t-shirt, because you have to be a patron. <laughs> it's $2. Then become a patron <laughs> by June 14th, and we'll get that to you as soon as we can. It'll probably take us about a month to get it all together. Yeah. But. And, and that, that way, if you, you know you try to do the whole, do the $2 for one month and then dick us, we'll be like, mm, is it worth it? Nah. <laughs> So, I'm really excited for that. I think that's going to be an awesome shirt. I've seen your prototypes. It's going to be great. I appreciate that. I appreciate the. You're really kind of boosting my confidence here, man. <laughs> that is awesome of you. I'm the best. Co-host. So I I want to apologize again for not putting out a headliner. Uh, still dealing with some issues. One uh, with the program I was using, and two I still have some family matters going on that have you know kind of taken precedence in my life, but. If I find a new program that's easier to work than Headliner, I will for sure use it and get one out. And for the person who shared it, who went back and shared one of my old Headliners, I hate you. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta be the current one, which there wasn't. I hope you're huffing and puffing up that hill when you hear this, because I hope it causes you to wreck your bike. (laughs) (laughs) You really shouldn't be listening to stuff while you're on your bike, though. It's pretty dangerous. Yeah, you tell them that. Okay. Don't listen to stuff while you're on your bike. That's incredibly dangerous. That's the only time he listens to our podcast. It's oh <laughs> the only reason he will, because he needs motivation. <laughs> Pisses him off enough. Would you call this motivation? You can't do it. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> You'll never be skinny. Do you want to see my bits? So, sorry, my bear bits? I would love to see your okay. bear bits. So this week, scientists at the Wolong, which is definitely how you say it, National Nature Reserve in southwest China caught a picture of the world's first known albino giant panda. It was picture it was captured at 6500 feet and shows white fur and claws, pink red eyes, and is between 1 and 2 years of age. That is not a very cool looking bear. Not it, it's freaking creepy looking, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, albinos are creepy in general. The red of, eyes and everything? Yeah. Yeah. But that thing looks Straight out of a horror movie. Yeah, and I mean, it's like it, it's it, it's not even a real panda in my mind because pandas are known for being black and white and cute and fluffy and well, no, lazy. We're making a petition to end their name of giant panda. Oh, that's right, we are because the original panda isn't actually a bear, so this one doesn't deserve its name. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be black and white, big fluffy thing. Okay, I love <laughs> it. I love it. New name. New name. Started by Launch Speed. Lazy Bamboo Eater. Nice. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, this guy's ugly. This is this is an ugly bear. <laughs> Are there any albino animals you can think of that would be cuter as an albino than it would be as its original self? No, because they have red eyes. Don't some rats have red eyes to start with? Uh, maybe rabbit. White rabbits have red eyes. I, I think. I think because they're albino. Uh, okay, I'm glad you picked <laughs> that up. <laughs> I'm gonna guess. There's got to be some critter out there that's cuter. A albino chipmunk. So it turns out they don't all have red eyes. We did some research. Uh, I was wrong. Uh, but I think the albino fox is pretty cool looking. I mean, it's like kind of like the Arctic fox. Isn't it the Arctic fox? No. It's just an albino fox. Like a red fox or a gray fox? Yeah. Okay. It's a regular fox that's albino. They're pretty cool looking. Found north. Usually called Arctic foxes. No. <laughs> also, also, no. Whatever. Google said it's adorable, so we're going with it. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Casey and I watched the Game of Thrones documentary uh, on Friday night. and Would you recommend to a friend? I would recommend it. Okay. It's really cool because you've heard it a lot that each episode of Game of Thrones, at least in the final season, was the equivalent of a entire movie's worth of production. Right. Which is so, sort of true, sort of not, because there's a lot more like dramatic scenes and pauses that are just someone walking down the stairs and stuff like that in season eight of game of thrones than in a movie there's a lot more dead time non-dialogue non-action time so that's not entirely true but it's still a tremendous amount of work and the the documentary kind of gives you a behind the scenes glimpse into how many people were involved how much time how complicated everything was in coordinating everything and it really gives you a nice appreciation for what what went into the show 
even though it was a disappointing and upsetting end. And and it really made me think about like these these people who worked on the show. How do they feel when when everyone's saying that the season sucked? Like it, and it, I I'm, I'm gonna you know back that up and saying that it's not any of their faults. Agreed. It's no. the writers' fault. The production was amazing. Everything looked really good. It it flowed together pretty well. The storyline made a lot of people unhappy. But as far as it leaving Game of Thrones with like an, an excellent lasting legacy, I, I think it did. I think it absolutely accomplished that. Yeah. I will say that the the work, the actual quality of that season eight was phenomenal compared to any of their earlier seasons. With the exception of that one episode, which everybody besides the producers thought was too dark. Oh, yeah. It was, it was they were like, and they even said they were like, it's not that the episode was too dark. It's that your TVs aren't calibrated properly. That and their streaming issues. I so I when I watched it, I had I set my TV up because I already heard about all the bitching about how dark it was. Right. And I set it up and it was a fantastic episode, and it there was nothing I missed. I, nothing was too dark. To well, see. a lot of it was taking place in the fog at night. Well, yeah, but it still was well enough lit. If you had if you did have your TV set up correctly. It was an excellent episode. Yeah. So stop your all bitching and figure <laughs> out how to fix your TV. So for, I think just that episode, they had to do 15 weeks, I think of night shoots. Oh my God. Yeah. It's a long time to be up at crazy hours. And I mean, just think about even just all the extras. Cause how many extras were in that episode? A ton. Yeah, and they were like committing to this. I will say I did appreciate that about Game of Thrones is the fact they used a lot of extras for mass scenes rather than CGIing the majority of it. Yeah, and uh, in the documentary, they kind of focus on this one extra who's been doing it like every year for the last five or six years. And it's funny because he was in Stannis Baratheon's army and he actually got a close up in there. And then he was like behind Jon Snow and he got a close up there and he was like part of the Starks and he got a close up there. And it's like just the same guy, but you would never notice it unless you're looking for it. And I was like, that's cool. That's cool for that guy. Yeah. I, he, he like got a hug from Kit Harington on the final shot of the season. And it, it was neat. It was neat. All right. I'll take it. Yeah. I, so I, I'll probably go and watch it now on your recommendation. Also, uh, what's really interesting is the Night King, who doesn't have a single line of dialogue, uh, he's just stuntman. He's a stuntman? He's a stuntman. So he's in other shots? No, he's that's just what his job was beforehand. And oh. they were like, do you want to do this? He was like, or, or they, they called him up and said, do you want to be a king? He said, I can be any king you want me to be. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, he's, uh, I think, Czechoslovakian. And uh, or from the Czech Republic, I think is what it's called now. And yeah, he's he he was so he was so awkward because he's not like used to being an actor, and he was so happy that people recognized him and he had fans and that's so cool. Yeah. I freaking love the the culture that some things develop. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of a lot of positivity came out of this whole Game of Thrones thing, and you get to see some of that in the documentary. So if you if you haven't already canceled your HBO subscription, <laughs> <laughs> I recommend going back and watching it. It's two hours long. But I really enjoyed it. I would say most people's probably just ended since it is now June 1st. Yep. Well, it's from when you started it, though. Oh, true. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if you still have it, I would definitely recommend it. I would not recommend watching Westworld Season 2, but the <laughs> Game of Thrones documentary is good. Before you cancel your HBO, can you watch an episode of Watchmen for me and let me know how it is? <laughs> well, it's not out yet, but sure. Oh, it's not? Uh, no. Nothing for it is out. Nope. Because it has been hyped up pretty hard by hbo and it does have me kind of looking seeing if i want to get it because it looked really good so we're we're re-watching all of game of thrones because you know it's been like six years since i watched the first season so we're, we're doing that and then we'll consider canceling our game of thrones or sorry yeah. we'll consider canceling <laughs> our hbo subscription game of thrones is already canceled game of thrones is already done canceled wouldn't say cancel a lot of people canceled it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, enough about that. Moving into our tech lives. Yes. Uh, let's let's chat about things that you probably shouldn't have. Uh, I would say almost number one on that list is going to be a laptop with some of the worst viruses in the world intentionally on it. Yes. You were telling me that someone bought a laptop that basically has Ebola on it. It's the tech equivalent of Ebola. So, 
I, I, I had to read up on it because it, I one, I can't stand trying to have things explained to me live because I feel real dumb when that happens. <laughs> uh, it's got a couple, it's got, thus, it has six very specific viruses, right? Right. The, the actual virus that caused the damage. And I, I read up on it. The six viruses have combined to cause an estimated damage of $95 billion. So some of these viruses are the ransomware viruses. Ransomware uh, being when someone basically installs this, they encrypt your files and you have to pay them to get the encryption key. And without the encryption key, you are never going to get those files back. Yeah. And this affected a ton of people, including, I mean, the big, the dangerous one was a bunch of hospitals. Uh, Baltimore city government's currently going through a thing with ransomware and they can't, can't figure that out. And so that, that's gonna, that's going to be a lot of the damage. So like this wanna cry, which I think was the last year caused nearly $4 billion in damages. That was, that was one of the specific ransomwares one. That right? was one of the, and guess who it piggybacked up off of who the NSA. Oh, that's they, right. Their, their tool to access multiple computers, their back door to, uh, yeah, to Microsoft basically allowed, uh, it was leaked to a group of cyber hackers that called themselves the, crypto bankers or kip crypto break brokers i don't know they a bunch of kids sitting in their basement yeah uh they they piggybacked into a bunch of microsoft computers mm, yeah that, that was a that was a real screw up by the nsa letting that get out there the a government agency slacking on a job and that's not the first time that's happened no. there was another one specifically with the nsa and another one of their tools that got leaked and people exploited that so, so if we have any advice to give, do not click on any fishy emails. <laughs> if it's a Nigerian prince that needs to give you money, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> he is not, as Mike says, waiting outside. It's definitely not. But so why why did they make this computer? I, I'm i not sure. It seems like a terrible thing to do, but I, I think the intention was art. I think they intended it to be a piece of art. Yo, artists need to calm the fuck down. I like... I kind of get it. I guess it, it it's like a symbol of the most dangerous things you can pretty much do with your computer. That being said, you wouldn't really want to bring that into your house. Maybe a museum or something. Not even I you would you really want it to be public? I wouldn't really want it to be anywhere. It's just it seems like such a bad idea. And I I mean they they've isolated it, right? You can't connect to the computer unless you insert a thumb drive yep. or something. Which, or turn its Wi-Fi on. Yeah. It's just, it's risky. It's real risky. And I don't know why anybody would want to buy this, but it sold for $1.345 million. Wow. What? Um, over a million? Over a million dollars. For literally something that could, whatever area you're in, it will 100% F it over hard. Yeah, and chances are the... Uh, I wouldn't really call them companies. The hacker groups that are like collecting money for these things, for, for the ransomwares, they're probably not even paying attention to it anymore because the the viruses more or less disappeared. Yeah. they've. Been so you're going to encrypt the all the files on all of your computers on your home network and you just can't get them back. And then some data is probably going to be sent to China without you knowing. And I mean, your, your data is already being sent to China. Oh, that's true. By Epic games. Uh, it's just a, <laughs> it's just a, a bad idea. A really bad idea. I mean, all it takes is one minor. What what is the equivalent of a lab accident or a drunk person or a child to completely fuck yourself. Just so I like it's, it's sold for 1.3 million, which means they've got a lot of money. They probably throw big house parties what if they have this piece on display and then some a-hole is like, here, let me show you a Facebook video and then pulls it up and then he's like, oh, I have no internet. Clicks on the Wi-Fi and everyone's phone, everyone's everything in the room is just <laughs> absolutely boned. Yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, something like that, you would hope they put that in like a bulletproof glass safe, but they're not doing that. No. They're like, look, the, the point of art is to show other people. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, Internally, it's like, yeah, I appreciate art, blah, blah, blah. But really what it is is to show other people how much money you have. Yeah. That's why people collect art. Yeah, I totally agree with you. <laughs> you, so, want, 
you 100% buy art to co- show everyone how big you are downstairs. <laughs> overcompensating and so this guy is going to be like hey look at how much money i spent on this piece of trash piece of utter trash but hey man if i could get a laptop and put a bunch of viruses on it and sell it for a million dollars i would that's that is true i would also. i would if if i had thought of this first and i thought anyone would actually buy this piece of shit <laughs> i would have done it i i'm like what is this guy thinking it's i'm assuming it's a guy because men tend to do stupid things. Yeah, this is guy this is one hundred percent a dude being like, Oh yeah, I need that. Look how big my dick is. <laughs> I mean, look at how much money I make. Like what is going through this guy's head? And other laptop news. Intel has produced a prototype for a laptop with two screens. It is incredibly cool looking. Yes, I one hundred percent agree. It is it is cooler than I was expecting. I kinda expected like a a dual screen side by side system. I didn't expect one to be under underneath the other like that. So the way that it kind of looks is, uh, you remember the science fair? Yes. It, it, you know, those backboards that you had mm-hmm. that had the one piece and then the two sides that folded out. Yep. That's how this computer looks turned on its side. Oh, it looks like a trifold. That's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Cause so there's three of them. It's got the keyboard and then at a 120 degree angle, from that, you have a smaller screen, and then 120 degrees from that, vertically, is yet another screen. So it it isn't as good as a full two-screen setup, but it adds a lot of functionality in that small screen there. Yes. Uh, also, I like the fact, so what, the, what, what I found a problem with most laptops is to you know be comfortable where the screen is because you don't want to be looking down all the time. You kind of want the screen up. If you bring the screen up, you tend to have your keyboard way out of position, and that's even uncomfortable. You'd be typing like up by your shoulders, right? And nobody wants that. I think they they really nailed it by by stacking the screens because you don't have to hunch over to comfortably look at the screen. Yeah, and so for most people who have two screen setups, you know, you have to you know bring your cursor over to whatever app is running on the second screen, click on it, and that way you're interacting with it. This one uses eye tracking to determine what screen you're going to be interacting with. What? So how would, do you think that would work if you're wearing glasses? I have real doubts about that. I think it, well, I don't know why it wouldn't. I mean, sunglasses. Sunglasses, are, like, but useless. What effing a-hole plays <laughs> or looks at its screen with sunglasses <laughs> on? So, Besides, like, a grandma trying to protect her eyes from blue light, which has been the devil. Yeah. Uh, the, I really I really do like that eye tracking thing. That's super cool. If I could have that on a regular computer, I think I'd do it. Would you? You're always freaked out by things like that it's not it's not going anywhere it's just tracking for my you know function it it helps me accomplish things because i i have three screens i have many more screens than that at work (laughs) (laughs) if i didn't have to like change from one window to the other and i could just look on screen left type some stuff look on screen right type some stuff that would be super helpful for me i i completely agree that it is a fantastic idea and i would love it to be implemented in more things yeah uh i think that's not maybe not revolutionary but it's a real nifty feature they got there yeah i i think it's very swell i feel like the a lot of things that laptops try to compete with is the power of pcs the you know desktop computers for gaming and whatnot and you know for create actual creative purposes not going onto some website and doing some like etsy thing nobody fucking cares uh but like if you're doing actual photoshop work like it requires a lot of power and a lot of you know video editing and rendering and that that takes a lot so this thing also comes with a high a pretty high-end graphics card for a laptop the nvidia gtx 1070 the 1070 which is like a about the third best in the second oldest generation i mean it's it's up there yeah it's it's a powerful card and it for gaming it's 100 percent enough and for most editing purposes i believe it would also be enough yeah the thing about this is it has the i9 processor in it nice which for everyone who doesn't know tech news that is the highest and best processor you can get for an intel and very expensive Yes, yeah, so I'm sure the price tag of this computer sits around two, three thousand dollars. Probably more than that. Probably be thirty five hundred, four thousand dollars. I mean, especially because these screens are supposed to be incredibly high resolution, and I mean, you've got two screens, 
you have these hinges that should be foolproof. Yes. And, uh, I mean, it, it's just a prototype, so it's not really, you can't really put a price yeah. on it yet, uh, but it's, it's cool. I like it. I'm not, I, I have no reason to get it, but for a lot of people, I think it'd be cool. And, and it's, it's definitely very interesting. Yeah, I think some companies could benefit from getting their employees this this kind of setup instead of having like you with what seventeen effing screens at yeah. work. Uh-huh. I don't know how many you have. I assume it's like five or six. Uh, it was seven. Jesus, I think I downgraded to six. Okay, it wouldn't work for you. I'm thinking more <laughs> of like people who need two, maybe three screens. Ge- generally, I use three for most. Why things. do you need six? <sighs> It's complicated. Okay, fair enough. We, we're not talking about it. <laughs> whatever. Let's let's hit some car news though. Let's get let's get out of the the major tech news. Yeah, for sure. So, do you get motion sickness in cars? I do not. You no, know, I've never been car sick. Okay. I'm, I I'm imagine... also not a little pussy, so that's why I don't get car sick. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I imagine it's terrible. I've never. Well, actually, when I was a kid, one time, and we were driving through the mountains, and I was reading a book. Then I got I got a little car sick. I just felt a little nauseous. Didn't feel that great. But besides that, never been car sick. I imagine it's terrible. Yeah, Apparently, my, it affects about a third of people. My my one of my family members, specifically my brother, is affected by it, and I'm for sure thinking he's just a little fucking whiner. One time, uh, my brother, sorry, my sister and your brother were in a car ride that was three to four hours long, and obviously only one of them could sit up front. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God. So I ended up in the middle. Wonderful. Yeah. It was terrible. I think I, I feel like being in the middle of the car would be better for someone who gets car sick than anywhere else Can't in the car. Can't be next to the window. So uh, so what this article is saying, where we're going with all this, yes. uh, Volkswagen is testing anti-motion sickness things. And the reason they're doing that is because uh, people who get motion sick get motion sick when they're not driving. Right. Because more or less they can't predict what the driver's going to do and somehow that throws them off. So Volkswagen's testing stuff so that when you're in an autonomous vehicle, you can ride in there comfortably without getting sick. So they're they're testing a couple different things. Uh, their, their initial tests right now are with the lighting of the car. They've got LED strips. They've got RGBs everywhere. And it's the lights are going to change according to what's going to happen. So red would mean it's going to accelerate and blue would mean it's going to break. Just just to give your brain some kind of hint of what's going to happen and try to alleviate that surprise, you know, what's going on. And eventually I feel like you'll get used to the signals and then you'll kind of be more in tune with it if you're paying attention and be more comfortable they're also, if it works. They're also going to try with seats that move according to the car. Ooh, that's odd. So the, the seat will shift. Imagine if you have some kind of glitch in that system, though, and it shifts when it, like you're turning right and you should be going to the left, and it's just like takes you to the right. It, That'd be even worse. You just, <laughs> <laughs> just literally pull the vomit out of you. I I saw something. It, this was a while back uh, where they did a uh, virtual reality thing that went along with the car. So the what you were watching in virtual reality, uh, the which you were in a spaceship or something like that. And it was doing the same maneuvers that the car was doing. And apparently, that helped with the motion sickness. Oh, it did. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but I I don't know. It, it's cool that they're doing this. I don't know how well that would work. I'd be fucking annoyed if there were LEDs lighting up all the time. I mean, LEDs aren't the most pleasant thing to look at, despite the fact that I have a thousand of them. I was going to say, my whole, we both have set <laughs> RGBs but, everywhere. But like, setup. well, okay, I guess it depends on how they do it. Like, LED ambiance, ambiance, however you pronounce it, is cool when it lights up like a wall or something like that, but an individual LED sucks. I don't think it's going to be an LED pointed at you like a flashlight. <laughs> I think it's LED strips ran in the trim of the car. Okay. So it is ambiance. Ambiance. <laughs> it's going to schmooze you as you <laughs> drive along to help alleviate that, that sickness. Okay. Then that's cool. That's cool. I mean, I think I can already solve this problem for him. Don't be a little bitch. Don't be a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's Great all. advice from Zachary. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm I, I'm kind of skeptical of how efficient or how well this is going to work. If, if this works for autonomous vehicles, I think they need to include it in 
the back seat of cars for people who plan to have children in the back of it and that whine and cry and say they're getting sick. So your mom driving your minivan doesn't have to deal with all that crap. Yeah. I, it could definitely be spread to other real world applications. I definitely think so. Volkswagen's trying to make the driving experience or the riding experience more pleasant, but Jaguar is trying to make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> How, what is what is Jaguar? So Jaguar, uh, in an effort to combat distracted driving, is attempting to have an input system on the steering wheel that alerts you to things. And this input system on the steering wheel is heat based. So they're trying to burn your hands and let you know that you're falling asleep. Like it gets it gets hot enough to be uncomfortable. That's their is that their goal? Probably, because otherwise, what's the point? If is so so the way that it's supposed to work is different parts <laughs> of the steering wheel are gonna get hot or maybe cold, it, depending on what they're trying to tell you. Like if you're about to run into like cross the line on your right, maybe the right side of your steering wheel will will be hot. This again, also just a prototype. So if if it's not that like. If it's not that hot, if it doesn't get that hot, then you're not going to notice. If it gets slightly warmer, what's that going to tell you? Your hands are going to get sweaty. You're going to die because your hand slips off the wheel. <laughs> also, I've got a big issue with things like this that interact with the steering wheel. Mostly because they pretend that everyone drives at 10 and 2. If you're not 16 years old and learning how to drive or you're not 70 and struggling to look over the steering wheel. You're not wheel, even supposed to drive at 10 and 2 anymore. You're supposed to drive at 4 and 8. Okay, regardless, that implies that you have both hands on the steering wheel most of the time you're driving, which is just not true for the driver of today. I've seen people who do it, but yes, I agree. Most people aren't doing this. And it, yeah, no, not, not everyone's going to put their hands there. And even like I'll put my hand up on top of the steering wheel. Sometimes I'll put it on top and a little bit to the, my left hand on top and a little bit to the right. So like one o'clock. So how is that going to help? Yeah, my it's just gonna what burn my thumb every occasion. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so we we drive manuals, so we do drive one handed more often than we drive with both hands because it's just easier. Yes, I don't like taking my hand off the shift if I don't have to. Yeah, I I even in my automatic, I tend to rest my hand on the gear knob lever shifty thing. So if you ever get in a hard spot, you can park it real fast. Yeah. God, jam that bitch down. <laughs> it's, just, it's just comfortable. It's just, it's I just how, I, how I drive. When I was initially driving a manual, when I was like learning how to drive it, every every time I would shift and put my hand back on the steering wheel and it would get a little jerk because I was putting my hand on the steering wheel too hard. <laughs> so I just kind of stopped doing that. I, I told you that I almost failed my driving test because I was driving a manual, right? No. no maybe. So So we're driving along. And we just get out of the parking lot scenarios and the two point turn, the parallel parking. Two point turn. Two point turn? Whatever. Who cares? We're getting out of it and I we stop at the stop sign and I go to shift and she goes, If you take your hand off the steering wheel again, you'll fail the test. And I was like, How do you expect me to get this car to move? And she was like, You can just press on the gas. And I was like, And it's then It's a what? manual. And I was like, This is a manual. And she was like, You this is a manual? I was like, what do you think I've been doing this whole time? And she was like, I thought, I thought you just wanted to have your hand over here. I was like, are you a freaking idiot? <laughs> and I, and then she's like, well, I hope you don't fail because I can't drive a manual. So if, if she had failed me, you're not allowed to drive back. I guess. So what? I'm just going to leave my car. Like, I guess we're walking home to the NBA, a hole. But I was just so irritated at that point. Cause I just had so many dings against me for taking my hand off the steering wheel that's so annoying but what she wanted me to do was shift and then put my hand back on immediately right and that's fine for which a driving test which is successful this is not how people drive no it's not and also I uh, I think I got a lot of leniency after that because I drove not aggressively but I did drive my normal self after that point because I knew I was like no way this lady's gonna fail me because she has just dicked me so hard with these points we pulled into the NBA at 37 miles an hour nice Speed was 35, and I was like, I'm just going to turn without braking, and then we just came skirting, skirting it. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone who actually failed their driving test because they hit the curb on their way to park. Wait, like, so they pulled in the spot and hit it? Yeah. Ooh. And they failed. That's tough. Sucks. But uh, I don't think this steering wheel technology is really going to help anyone here. No, and it's, it's never going to work because it's under the assumption that people drive 
how they're how they're taught to taught, yeah which is absolutely not true i mean if you go on any road anywhere nobody's driving anything like how they were <laughs> instructed to you got people cruising in the left lane at 50 miles an hour when the speed limit's 55 you got people passing in the right lane when the speed limit's 55 going 70 you know nobody's got two hands on the wheel what half the people are on their fucking phone yeah like nobody's using turn signals myself included i don't think my cars <laughs> have turn signals <laughs> if they did, I disabled them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nobody maintains a safe distance. I mean, this this is, I agree, on, on that assumption, not going to work. I would say if what if the steering wheel was to shock you if it noticed you were falling asleep? What? Then you're going to take your hands off the wheel? How is that safer? <laughs> it's <laughs> like, no, no, no. I don't mean like. It shocks your hands like it's got like a little thing, like a a little probe. A it, needle? Yeah, it just it stabs, stabs you. <laughs> it's so terrible. Just like wake up, you're like, Ugh! but it like it I sho- hate this car. It shocks you hard enough that it doesn't like your hands don't your hands contract, so you can't so like you, go can, the, <laughs> you can't get your hands that off the wheel. Awful. What if it just what if it just did it to your seat? Like it shot it could shock your right shoulder, or your left shoulder. Like hard, like or like what you say is a pleasant buzz. Like really hard. That would be awful. <laughs> jerk to the right, <laughs> run off the road. What if you get someone to drive off shock alone? <laughs> they don't. They don't have to pay attention. They're just like their muscle in the. Why would they? Do that? <laughs> We're like almost the autonomous vehicles. Why would we revert to some subhuman shocking of muscles to make someone be a slave to their car? Would you do it? No. Oh, okay. No. I think I would. At least once. <laughs> I'd watch you do it. <laughs> no, that's that's stupid. I there are other ways to give people input. I really want to see heads up displays on car windshields. I know they they kind of sort of have them for some stuff, but I want them to be like legit like in the glass. Yes. Like spaceship kind of stuff. I think no I, dash, large front windshield. That'd be awesome. And have everything down on the the bottom edge. Yeah. Just just enough out of your main field of view, but not so you have to look down off the road completely. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. You know what irritates me about not heads up displays, but things that people want in their field of view? When people mount their phone to like the middle of their windshield on the right side. Mm-hmm. I don't know why that irritates me. I think it's a terrible mounting position. I think you guys should either do top left corner or bottom left corner. I don't think there's a good position to mount your phone. Or check this. Know where you're going first. Yeah. I know that's hard for people these days. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I When I don't know where I'm going, I typically have a navigator. Uh, Casey's actually one of the best navigators I've ever driven with. Really? Yeah. She's really good. That's awesome. Uh, I've had other navigators that are like, you know, go towards the green trees. And it's like, <laughs> all right. I, so I, there's one, one small little tangent here. When people give you directions, do you prefer they give you a distance and then a turn or a landmark and then a turn? A landmark? Like they're like, if you, you know, if you like a large. Wait, are they barn, in the car with me? Nope. They're giving you directions to go off of. A landmark is going to be easier if I've never been there before because I'm not, I'm not looking at how many miles I've gone. Y- you don't do that, no. Oh, because I do. I. You'd I, rather someone give you a distance? Yes, because it's very specific at that point. I don't like landmarks because then you have to be looking off of the road for something specifically. When you have your distance, you're like, okay, I've gone three quarters of a mile. I know the turn is going to be on my right here in just a second. But okay, that's under the assumption that. The person who gave you directions that knows wasn't the part distance. of the scenario. That okay. wasn't part of the scenario. Okay, because your GPS gives you distance, and it, it does. It does. It doesn't say turn right at the Christmas tree looking thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're right. It doesn't. But I mean, if if it's a good landmark, yes, if I it's also a good landmark. hate the if you've seen this, you've gone too that's far. So don't do that to me. Don't be like, oh, if you see this, you've gone too far. What the hell does that matter to me? The one time I was relying on that instruction was in snowshoe and it did not help because we somehow ended up because because the road went up one side of the mountain and down the other and we somehow ended up going the wrong way through the the god the fog <laughs> yeah the <laughs> like fog. it's straight out of a horror movie <laughs> and then we ended up on some county road not paved like mud and gravel 
on the side of a mountain, one in one third lanes, <laughs> <laughs> and like, and it was like if you've gone, if you've seen this, you've gone too far. And we went like six miles down the road, and, and never nothing. Saw it. And never there's, saw it. there's like what two houses on that road? That w- yeah, you, that would be so inconvenient to live there. Oh <laughs> yes, or super convenient, <laughs> depending on what you do, I guess. Because like it, I, I don't like going turning onto a road that has high traffic. Yeah, that's never fun. No. I also don't like living on a road that has a sharp curve before after. But would uh, you like to live on a road that you can drive down if it rains? No. No, that nope. You're right. Nope. nope. <laughs> I would prefer to drive in a mudslide every time. <laughs> that way, I don't have to use my car. I can just kind of skid along. More efficient. Definitely. Less gas. As long as you keep the keep the clutch out. Yeah. Speaking of more efficient things, Jeep <laughs> decided. You know what? I need a thousand freaking horsepower. If you couldn't decide between a Jeep, a pickup truck. In a 1,000 horsepower supercar, fear not. Jeep has come up with a solution for you. Who made this? Was this Hennessy? This was Hennessy. Uh, the new Jeep Gladiator is the pickup truck that looks like a Jeep and looks a little bit absurd, but also kind of cool. Definitely has the cool aspect for me. I mean, because it's it's still a Jeep and it has the functionality of a pickup truck, but it's it, it, it's it's like almost to Hummer. At this point. It, Almost. But guess what? It's not a Hummer. You're right. It's not a Hummer. It's a Jeep. I kind of like it. Uh, can but you, can I you don't guess? need a thousand horsepower in it. What? Yes, you do. You <laughs> always need a thousand horsepower. I mean, the ride height, is, it's so so tall. And it's got big tires. It is should be capable of off-road. So it's probably got springy suspension, not stiff suspension. So... This would be terribly inefficient to have a thousand horsepower in. Not only that, I imagine it's rear wheel drive standard. It, yep. And with no weight in the back of the pickup truck. It, if you, you step on the gas, you're one, not going anywhere. Two, gonna run through tires so fast because you're accidentally spinning them all over the place. That I bet this car would be a freaking ball to have on a snowy day in an empty parking lot. Or 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 in the sand dunes oh yeah oh my god that'd be perfect you could just i i don't think i personally could own this car not because of my pride or it seems unnecessary uh, is it because it's two hundred thousand dollars it's because it would kill me i would immediately <laughs> go out i because if i had the money to buy this i would also have the money to go out to like dubai with it and i would immediately go off a sand dune 90 feet high at 175 miles an hour in a jeep <laughs> <laughs> That would not go good for you. And if you don't know Jeeps, everyone in a Jeep dies in the accident. So a little more on the engine. It's got a 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8 from Dodge's Hellcat lineup. And it's about 1,000 horsepower and 933 pound feet of torque. You could haul a house with this thing. Yeah. 20 inch wheels, an additional six inches of lift. I oh, mean, they even added more. I wonder I wonder if this thing could actually take off. I don't mean fly, but I mean like can it get going fast enough to have enough air under it to lift it? Like the old old race cars problems. Oh. I ooh, I don't know. I feel like it probably could. I I feel like the aerodynamics are going to be absolute shit on this thing. I mean, it's a it's a Jeep, right? So it's a, it's a brick. It's a brick. <laughs> it's a brick. I mean, look at that windshield. They don't even try and make it curved. It's just a flat piece of glass. I will say going through a you know, any you know like the swarms of bugs during the summer. Uh-huh. That thing is a murderer. <laughs> no bug. Get, there is no slipstream around the car that things can get around. You just hit anything in front of you. Bats hate him. Uh, I think Dad has definitely killed a couple of birds with the thing because they can't. Most birds can use the slipstream to kind of get away from your car. In the Jeep, they can't. That's weird because birds see at such a high frames per second, if you will, that they typically just don't get hit by cars unless they're larger birds like vultures and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but. <laughs> Uh yeah no two hundred thousand dollars for this this thing this monster and only kind of in a good way yeah I mean it's absolutely unnecessary it it looks atrocious from this angle from the back it looks rear. Like, it looks like we went back you know 
85 years to the original pickup truck with that. Does that not look like one of the original Except trucks? for it's gigantic. It, it has yeah. that like uh, pseudo-military kind of look to it, which I think maybe what appeals to me. It, it's like, it's something a, uh, a not a, not a militia, but uh, yeah, no mercenaries. Militia. I was going to say, no militia is a Ford. No. It still, looks like something mercenaries would have. They're still using the Toyota Coma out there because that thing will run in sand windstorms and yep. AK fire at it all the time. Yep. That's why you get a Tacoma <laughs> and not a $200,000 Jeep Gladiator. I mean, who needs a thousand horsepower Jeep? Who doesn't need a thousand horsepower? You know, I think if you gave most people a 500 horsepower car, they would die. Most people I think would die. I, I don't think that because I feel like they, they're incapable of actually using it. I think as soon as they realized how much power it was, they would never, ever step on the gas. They would use the cruise control to accelerate. They'd get to like 20 miles an hour and set it and then bump it up as they go. Oh, my God. That would be so <laughs> annoying. I mean, I I think that – I guess it depends on the person. Some people would be very timid with it and other people would, would try and try and use it. No Those boy, are the people that are going to no die. No boy 60 years old and younger should ever have a car with more than 500 miles an hour <laughs> because as soon as you get a girl in that passenger seat, for some reason, you got to be like – Look what I can do in this car. I I'm, can get a skill. I can make sure you don't want to go out with me again. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't... Uh, yeah, no. It, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that I did not have a fast car when I was younger. Yeah. It's the Civic very did you thing. dirty and that thing had nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I had a minivan, a Honda Civic. You drove the minivan. I like drove the minivan, which... <laughs> I mean, it had to be six, so it's it's better than nothing. <laughs> so you had to use all of the gas pedal. <laughs> I had far more horsepower than any of my friends did. I agree. You d- you basically in had minivan. a pickup truck that had a back on it. Man, that thing's a baller. Put some. Uh, we had these giant uh, cabinet speakers. <laughs> I put those <laughs> things in the back of it. That was awesome. I really embraced being a teenager who could drive for the first time. <laughs> you did, my man. I will say that you did. And if I had had a one thousand or one thousand horsepower car, or even even more than two hundred and fifty, what did the Miata have? Because you not practically nothing. Because you spun that out into a ditch within like ten seconds of being in it. I did. I did it that. <laughs> uh, no, practically nothing. But it's also incredibly light, and I'd never driven a rear wheel drive car before. And you ensured that the full gas was on. Oh yeah, that was that was fun though. That was fun. Uh, I would have died if I had anything, uh, anything larger. All right, so let's 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 start to end this. You know, let's let's wrap this up with the best news we possibly could have. We saved it for last. Call of Duty has announced their newest game, and it is going to be Modern Warfare, not Modern Warfare Four. Not Modern Warfare 2. Not Modern Warfare Remastered. Just Modern Warfare. They're going back to their home ground. Uh, 2007, I think, is when the original game was. And uh, this is going to be, quote, a soft reboot. Yes. I, I'm i very, very excited for this Call of Duty. I will for sure get it the day it comes out. There are so many things specifically about this one that I'm excited about. First, First off. Uh, they're using the same characters that they did in the original Modern Warfare or some of the same characters like Captain Pierce. Yes. Uh, and they're changing up the story, which is great. They're trying to update the story to be more like uh, current okay. times. Because back in 2007, I think the story was Russia-focused. Uh, Russia was the enemy. and Russia funding, funding terrorism uh, in Something South, like that. And Saudi. now they're going towards... Uh, they're going more towards whatever current guerrilla warfare i guess uh which is what they're doing in the middle east more or less and the story is written by kurosaki in minkoff who are from naughty dog which if you've never played a naughty dog game uncharted is probably their biggest series and that game has been just absolutely bombarded with awards for having just excellent storyline yeah excellent storyline excellent gameplay so they're trying to make this Call of Duty have an actually good story. And I know that's stupid and it's pointless and it's not the most fun part of the game, but I think that's very exciting. Them actually bring in like legit writers yes. to like actually make something cool. I So Modern Warfare 4, the original Modern Warfare, which... Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, you mean? Thank you. Yeah. My bad. 
But Modern Warfare, uh, I thought the storyline was really good in that one, and I thought MW2 was even better. Was even better. That was the best like Call of Duty story that yes. I played. Uh, but moving past of their what they're what they're promising us, uh, the actual you know things about the game that matter is crossplay. They're yep. they're no longer going to do you know keep xbox playing with xbox windows with windows gated communities yes if you will so xbox and pc and ps4 who has finally caved in to peer pressure is going to be cross play because ps ps4 has been a real like are they going to include the switch with this or is that still the stepchild that no one wants to play with i don't know i don't even know if it's going to be on switch i'm I, I don't know if it'll be on switch it might be too complex <laughs> that's true their system does not handle much yeah uh and it's a brand new engine okay so it, it has not been uh i think this is the first game they're producing with it and so it might be might be awfully hardware intensive they're also moving away from this an obnoxious season pass garbage that is that i who brought that in was that the first time i remember first time i ever actually participated was battlefield one Okay, but I think it was in there before then, and I can't remember where it originated. Well, it took off with Fortnite, Apex, and all the battle royales. These season passes. Yeah, I'm. I've never. I at first I liked the idea. I thought it was really cool. It was the first time I've ever got to deal with the concept. But after you know eight of them, I'm done. I think it's a garbage strat. I think I think there's some some upsides to it, but I'm really really excited that they're not going to do it. And they're going to give you free maps. They're going to do DLCs and not be dicks about it. They're going to do DLCs for free. How is that, that? That's what I want. That's what I want. They're, yeah. they're, trying, to, they're trying to be really cool about it. They're, they're trying to be real bros. I, I feel like they've, they've somebody finally listened to the majority of gamers and been like, listen, nobody likes this. Nobody likes when we do this to them. Even though it makes us money, we want we want just everyone to enjoy it finally. And this, I feel like this game is going to be so far reaching compared to their other Call of Duty series. Yeah, I mean, this is a Infinity Ward game, so they typically do a very good job. Treyarch was the one who botched most of the Call of Duties. I think so. Yeah, and uh, I mean, yeah, now just. Infinity Ward, they they get it, they get it, they do it good. Uh, I'm really excited about. I'm just so excited about the lack of DLC, lack of paywall. I mean that that's so great because you know there were so many issues in previous games like you couldn't play certain playlists because your friends didn't have the map packs and like yeah. when you know you couldn't buy them and and a lot of people just don't want to. They can afford it, they just don't want to because you know they already paid for the game. Uh, what I what I am a little worried about is they're not having a season pass. They're not having DLC. They're going to need to make... If if they want to maintain this game, which I think, based on what I've seen, they want this to be the ultimate Call of Duty, at least for like the next three, four years. Okay. Uh, and that's a very tough thing to do because a lot of games, the, what what keeps them you know going is that purchase price. So you get the purchase price, but if you only do that once every couple of years, once every three, four years, then you're losing out on that big spike in revenue. So you have to find something to maintain the money. So for Fortnite and Apex, a lot of our games like that, it's the season pass and the microtransactions. So is this game going to be get bombarded with microtransactions? I, I think I think what they're going to do is, is take part of Fortnite and Apex's approach and also probably Rainbow Sixes a little bit. Uh, they're going to do very cheap and affordable microtransactions that are cosmetics. Fortnites aren't cheap, though. You can get it like a skin for 20 bucks. Well, that, that's... I'm talking about the cosmetic aspect because okay, Rainbow, okay. Rainbow Six is cheap and affordable. Rainbow Six, their microtransactions are the best because, they're, yeah, they're so cheap. And and But they affect gameplay. They legitimately affect how the game is played. They do. And they Fortnites do. don't. They don't affect anything of the game. They do not. So that's I'm hoping they combine the two, do cheap cosmetics, maybe do a game type, kind of like Rainbow Six. But I feel like that's that shouldn't they they shouldn't focus on that. I mean, Search and Destroy is more or less Rainbow Six, but I mean they're not going to beat out Rainbow Six in Rainbow Six's arena. No, 
Not uh, even close. Uh, absolutely not. They just don't even have the. And I, I have they have part. they said there's going to be any part of battle royale in this? Have they? They have not. I, I think they, I think they need to come out and be like, we're not doing this. I, that would be almost groundbreaking if they did that. If they were like, we're not going to do a battle royale or a mass multiplayer. I, I'd appreciate. Well, okay, I'd appreciate not battle royale. I would appreciate mass multiplayer. Like there was that game, I forget what it was called. It was like uh, sixty-four players on the side. That I'd be cool with. I like. That I was, like that was Battlefield. That was one of the Battlefields had. Uh, you can play sixty-four on PC. Okay, maybe that's what it was. Um, there, I think then there was a game even bigger than that, like hundreds of people per side. That's cool. I like that stuff. Like absolute total warfare. That's that, awesome. Okay, that. But Battlefield has that market cornered more or less. I, I, if if there's anyone they can beat up in their own arena it's battlefield yeah battlefield dropped the ball a long time ago and it's still rolling downhill well i i enjoyed i enjoyed very you know specific aspects of battlefield but call of duty just has that has that original shooter feel for me yes and i dude i'm excited i'm excited i was thinking about it did we did we ever actually play a call of duty game for more than a year mw2 we played longer than a year uh, yeah, I think we, because Modern Warfare Two came out, uh, and then Black Ops, and it took us a while to get Gosh. into into Black Ops, but then also uh, me and a couple friends played Black Ops for longer than a year because I think Black Ops Two was released, or it was it was something that it that we didn't feel like moving on from because the zombie mode in Black Ops was pretty well done, so. Modern Warfare came out, and then World War, and then Modern Warfare Two, and then and then Black Ops. Yeah, so MW Two, I feel like we played just a bit longer than a year, but not not really. Yeah, and uh, so there's been a bit of a snafu with the next Call of Duty. Uh, basically, the the one following this, the one that'll be coming out in 2020, uh, it's changed hands. Who's developing it? And so basically, it's going to be rushed. It's going to be a botched job. It, it's I they, there's they're doing it a year earlier than they were supposed to, and I feel pity for those developers that are gonna have to sit there and work those long hours, and it's not gonna go well. I no. pretty much guarantee it. It's either gonna be a repeat of what they just did, or it's gonna be n- nothing new, or it's just gonna suck. I I I hope what they do is kind of like Fortnite, where they update the game. I I, I know that's hard with a storyline game. But with a with the multiplayer to keep people engaged in the multiplayer is right. update, you know, different game modes. You know, that's that's what they need to do. That's what they need to do to keep people engaged. And uh, I think that they have a good opportunity to do that. And I I want to bring everyone together again. I've been saying that I want to yes. bring everyone together again to play a game, like even if it's just once or twice a week. And uh, we're getting close. We're getting closer. We've, we've got three now. Yep. We're working on the fourth because. James has all the free time we need. <laughs> he just refuses to switch games. Uh, and then the other guys, I know they have time because I've seen them play. We just need to get everyone back. You're right. We need yeah. everyone back together. And and this this could do it. This could do it. I thought it was going to be uh, Black Ops 4. I was wrong. I hope, I hope what they have is that option. So uh, in the old MWs, you could only have six together in some game modes. Mm. In others, you could do eight, I believe. Mm-hmm. But... What you could do is you could join your friends' games as, on the other team as the other team. Yeah. And it was so much fun because you, I wouldn't join their Xbox party. I would just join the game and then I'd kill all of them. <laughs> and they're like, as soon as I killed one of them, it just became an all-out like they're hunting me down. And it was so much fun that way. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they keep that option where you can just join your friend and it'll put you in where it can. So I mean, on on that note. Uh, one of the things they quoted that they want to do is uh, bring continuity and consistency to the series and more importantly, unite the community. Good guys, Infinity Ward. Good, they got good goals. We'll see how it goes. I, I will support them all the way up to its release and then I will have to play it to keep going. <laughs> uh, but let's, let's end it there. Let's, let's end it there. Let's end on this high note. Okay. 
Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and do our YouTube and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you have any tips, suggestions, feedback, things you would like to hear us discuss on the podcast, or herbal IBS remedies for Zach, please don't hesitate to send us an email at launchmeetpodcast at gmail.com or reach out to us through social media. I feel like we need to shorten that up. <laughs> yeah, I think we should do some editing here. But if you want to support us and get some awesome merch, head on over to Teespring page and get some bear gear because everybody likes bears. Thank you to all of our patrons. Doug, Brian, Casey, Rob. Hopefully soon, Mike. Mike. Gonna hold you to that. Uh, if you want to get sticker shoutouts, bonus content, and a free t-shirt, help us out by subscribing to some of our tiers starting in measly $2 a month. Your contributions help keep the beer rolling and the content flowing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Goodbye.